Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Vector for E. coli. So if you have uh, watched my previous video, so I discussed about exertion and activation of certain compounds and enzymes. All right. So we'll be continuing from there on. So if you want to just get a reference for the part, you can just watch my previous video and just come back here. All right. So moving on from there. So this was the part we did. Uh, this was the last part that we covered. And uh, we are supposed to uh, move on from this. So let's let's just review this uh, once more so that we get all of the ideas uh, correct. So basically, the as we know, uh, as the topic says it's the insertion and activation of antibody resistant gene. So as we know, this is a plasmid. You know, this is a plasmid with the uh, selectable markers such as ampicillin resistant gene, tetracycline resistant gene. And this is BAM H1. This is the end restriction endonuclease enzymes, and it is acting here so that this can this part this some part can be cut and a foreign DNA can be placed. All right, a new DNA or a foreign DNA can be placed in this site. All right, so as it's written pretty clear. So when a foreign DNA gets inside this thing in the in the cut site of BAM H1, this causes an insertion inactivation of tetracycline resistant gene. All right, so in clear words, in easy words. Uh, when the foreign DNA gets inside or inserted in the BAMH1 site, it causes inactivity of tetracycline resistant gene, whereas the ampicillin resistant gene is still activated and still in function, whereas this gets non functional. So, this was the part we did in the last lecture. I have explained the entire part. Uh, you can just watch the previous video. All right, so moving on from there, previous slide also, uh, the first thing. Uh, ampicillin medium was uh, not uh, inactivated it was activated pretty much activated function so uh, the all the colonies which are recombinant one non recombinant ones grew all right both of them grew whereas tetracycline was inactivated so non recombinant ones did not grew and were not resistant to them and non recombinant one grew and recombinant ones did not grow so come to the next part so coming to cloning of gene of interest into HIN3 site of PBR322. So cloning into HIN3 site of PBR322 generally results in loss of tetracycline resistance. All right. So let's taking this is a plasmid. All right. So the next step will be. So cloning into HIN3 site of PBR322. So let's say this is PBR322. All right. So coming to the HIN3 side, let's say this is the HIN, this is, let's say this is the HIN3 side, okay? All right. So whenever we cut this HIN3 side, let's say this from here to here is the HIN3 side, all right? So when this part gets cut with the help of HIN3 side, a new DNA or a foreign DNA gets ligated here, all right? All right. And let's say this plasmid has a tetracycline region of this to this and ampicillin region to this to this. This is the AMP region. This is a tetracycline region, all right? And a HIN3 site has a cut site and the tetracycline resistant gene part in the gene region, all right? So when this uh, this is replaced by a new DNA in the tetracycline part, this gets inactivated as in the same pointed out in the BAM H1 part in the previous example, whereas the ampicillin part is retained or it's still functional, all right? Coming to this part, however, in some recombinants, TCR is retained or even increased. So some uh, yeah, th this is very much true that uh, some of them uh, the tetracycline part is not inactivated wherever uh, whereas it remains the same or in some very rare cases it's in, it, it's also increased the uh, the functionality is increased. Also let's come to the reason why it happens. So this is because the HIN3 side lies within the promoter rather than the coding sequence. All right. So this is one of the basic differences I. I recommend you to just remember, memorize this thing till from now. I'll be coming with all of the things, what is the promoter and everything in my upcoming videos. For now, just remember that the HIN3 site lies in the promoter region and not in the coding sequence. All right, so it does not code for anything, whereas it lies in the starting sequence or the promoter sequence. That's why the tetracycline resistant gene is inactivated in most of the cases. All also, thus, whether or not insertion in activity occurs depends on whether the clone DNA carries a promoter like sequence able to initiate transcription of the TCR gene. So I'll read it out for you again. So thus, whether or not insertion in activation occurs depends on whether 
lone DNA carries a promoter-like sequence able to initiate translation of the TCR gene. So, whether a DNA carries a promoter gene or not, so the new, D, uh, new DNA carries a promoter-like sequences able to initiate, which able to initiate the transcription of uh, tetracycline gene to form RNA, definitely. So this is this was one of the reasons that was uh, uh, that is very much important for this. All right. So I hope you, you were able to follow this thing or you just give a read once again if you do not understand or just type your questions in the comment section. I'll revert back to you as, as soon as possible. So this was it from this video. So I'll be explaining this part in my next video. This is the puck 18 part. So I'll be explaining the entirely what is it what it is all about. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.